that's why I've always refused to do uh, one of my traditional chairs without paint. Uh, because to me, you just can't see what it is I'm trying to create. Your eyes too distracted by by this wood grain going going all over the place, and uh, and 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 the chair grew up with paint. So I think you know it's kind of like uh, the the wine in France growing up with the food. You know it matches it. The beer in Belgium it matches it. <laughs> the paint <laughs> yeah. grew up with the chair. And yeah. so when somebody was designing a chair in 1780, they're not thinking about how is this wood going to look? They're only thinking about how's this wood going to function? Right. As far as aesthetics go, it's like, how is this, this unified design, this painted design going to work? Yeah. Uh, you know, these lines and these negative spaces, because you really, really can see them. Uh, whereas the natural chair, you can get by with a lot. And that's where I'm always telling people with whatever it is they're making, especially like, I mean, bowl turners or stuff like this, if you can do that shape uh, and paint it, do it out of a piece of poplar and paint it, you know, build your, your chair that your, your new design and paint it. And can it stand on its own? If it can stand on its own, okay, now you've got something and use that beautiful piece of walnut or butternut on it. But if not, and you expect the walnut to carry it like all these slab tables out there, uh, you know, that if you painted those things black, you would have nothing. So to me, it's a waste of, of, of good wood. Uh, so make sure that your design can carry itself before you use that beautiful piece of wood. So right. that's Curtis's philosophy on <laughs> <laughs> on <Great>. that subject. <laughs>